From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN New News. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us on the New News. I'm Augusta McDonald. The 2024 campaign season is already starting to heat up. Voters will choose two new state Supreme Court candidates next November with Chief Justice Mike McGrath and Associate Justice Dirk Sandifer both telling the Montana Free Press they will not be seeking re-election. One candidate has already filed campaign finance paperwork for the Chief Justice position, Jerry Lynch. He served 14 years as a federal magistrate judge working out of Missoula and praised the work of the court in recent years, saying they've been under, quote, unwarranted political attack. My motivation in protecting, defending the independence of the judiciary and the rule of law and protecting what I think is the most thoughtful state constitution in the United States gives me the motivation that I'm prepared to do what it takes. Two district court judges have launched campaigns for the associate justice position, Dan Wilson from Flathead County and Catherine Bidigare from Sydney. Common sense not only means that we should look at the law and interpret it without regard to what a special special interest group might prefer that we find for a meeting or even what our personal preferences might be, but merely to say what is there and not to seek to put what is not there. I feel lucky to live in a state that has adopted a protections in its constitution for very important rights um, and I I think that I have demonstrated in my 21 years as a district court judge that I will look at issues fairly and impartially. Supreme Court races are officially nonpartisan, but campaigns in recent years have drawn competition as heated as any other statewide election. Montanans have already reported receiving the first mailers for these upcoming races. This week is typically a busy one at campgrounds, but if you don't plan ahead, you might have some trouble finding a spot. Luckily, a new bill passed this year aimed at opening up opportunities for spur-of-the-moment camping trips and will go into effect just in time for the 2024 season. We've got tents and we've got a camper. Camping season is in full swing. What are you guys uh, looking forward to this weekend? Uh, all of it and mostly spending time with our family. But what happens when you want to take an unplanned trip and there's no spots available? We drove out pretty early on Thursday and we were here about noon and everything was already booked up or reserved. Sel Kalon and her family had high hopes for a fun weekend of camping in the Bighorn Canyon. But when they got down there, everything was taken, so they turned around and headed for Cooney Reservoir, getting the last spot in the campground. It's mainly because they let people reserve, so we don't get the opportunity to even have a chance at getting a spot. It's either you leave a day early or you miss out. But a new bill passed in the 2023 legislative session, House Bill 440, is aimed at opening up spots. It requires that no more than 80% of all available campsites may be reserved in a state park, recreational area, or a public camping ground with overnight camping. Meaning no less than 20% of spots will remain available for walk-up reservations. The bill applies to all locations with campgrounds that offer reservations and will go into effect in 2024. Just to try to create more opportunity for residents who might have last minute plans to be able to go to a site, say on a Thursday afternoon and find an available spot. Meaning families like the Kalons might have better luck when trying to find a vacant spot. This is the first time we got to camp in three years, so. Wow, so yeah. you've tried past years, but you just haven't yeah. been able? No luck. Wow. They've always been either booked or, because we're the type of people where we don't really plan ahead. We just like to go, you know. At Cooney Reservoir, Kelsey Marison, MTN News. Top headlines around the state, Lewis and Clark County Sheriff and Coroner Leo Dutton identified the 58-year-old man who died at Hauser Lake on Sunday as Wayne Harris of Helena, Helena. Harris and his girlfriend were out test driving a jet ski and working on it. They did not have life jackets on and at some point near the area of the causeway, Harris turned the jet ski sharply, causing the woman to fall into the water. Harris tried to help her back onto the jet ski, but he fell into the water as well. Rescue efforts were not able to reach him in time, and the official cause of his death is asphyxia due to drowning. A toxicology report is pending. 
and weather over the last five years has not been kind to ranchers. The extra moisture we've been talking about affects the quality of hay. Cattle feed ranchers were already paying a premium for because of drought a few years back. Three years ago, it was so dry in this region, hay production was next to zero. The lack of supply has prices up 20%. Growers are trying to catch up, but until they do, you'll likely notice the cost of beef going up at the grocery store. And in Reed Point today, we're hearing another update on the train derailment. Another animal, this time a garter snake, is found dead from the asphalt spill. Officials in charge of that cleanup maintain they've seen no impacts to water quality. Crews have cleared 12,000 pounds of material downstream and a public material drop-off just opened at Holmgren's Fishing Access. Officials say people should use gloves if collecting material. And in education news, the United Way of Cascade County is reminding parents in Great Falls and Cascade County now is the time to register their kids for the second annual Back to School Blast. This is video of volunteers preparing for last year's event. This year's event will be held August 18th at the Great Falls Civic Center. The hope of this year's is to hand out at least 1,200 backpacks full of school supplies, free haircuts and hygiene supplies, free wellness checks and immunizations, and affordable sports physicals will also be offered at this event. And that's a look at some of today's top stories. Good afternoon, everyone. Hopefully Thursday treating you good so far. Our local forecast coming up in just a second, but you can see some of us could see some wicked weather today. More on that in just a bit. But first, what's going on across the U.S.? Your weather headlines. Central Plains, more severe storms with heavy rain and flash flooding. You can see from Denver almost to Kansas City, that brown spot there, that's an enhanced risk. That means a better opportunity where we could see some tornado activity. Interior Pacific Northwest still baking up there. Hot weather continues. Look at Portland trying to get up to 93 today. Arizona, excessive heat warnings and critical fire risk remains. Okay, low pressure and a southeast flow with a lot of moisture coming up. You put it all together, showers and thunderstorms today. Some severe weather possible. We'll tell you where and when coming up. In a few short weeks, people from all over the globe will be traveling to Ikalaka for the 11th annual Dino Shindig. It's an event that gives 60 lucky people the chance to be paleontologists for the day, actually digging and making their own discoveries. The event is a huge boost to the economy here and proves that the 400-person town is home to some big pieces of Montana history. In the southeastern Montana town of Ekalaka sits the Carter County Museum. Step inside and you get a first-hand view into history. Yeah, so everything that you see in here is within 100 miles of Ekalaka. These discoveries are why up to a thousand visitors will be coming to town at the end of July when the annual Dino Shindig kicks off again. The Shindig was founded on the premise that we would like to share what is happening with the paleontological finds of the community with the community. Museum director Saber Moore helped arrange the first ever shindig fresh out of college in 2013. That first experience and the reception of the community got her to stay. Immediately, Iglaka was welcoming, very excited to have me be there, and entrusted me with their history. This December will mark her seventh year as director. During her time, she's witnessed serious growth to the museum's infamous dino shindig, which brings people to nearby sites, allowing them to dig and make their own discoveries. It's really skyrocketed, and what's fantastic is seeing the community really get behind it and get excited about it. But usually it's me with a couple other volunteers and then I take them around and say like this is the site, this is the history of it, these are the things that we pulled out of it. Gift shop manager Patrick Rowan helps with the event every year as a site expert. He says nothing compares to when visitors make their first find. To see kind of like that light up in their eyes and be like oh wow this is fun. They cap the site explorers at 60. All spots are filled in less than five hours typically, but plenty of other events bring travelers and business to the community. We fill every single hotel spot. We fill every single um, camping spot. It's really a fantastic uh, boost for the economy here. A small museum committed to making a big difference. We are becoming more influential towards not only our community, but the surrounding communities. We have a small museum look, but with a big museum attitude. In Ikalaka, Charlie Kleps, MTN News. Up next, Miller's in with another check of today's weather, and Russell will have the latest ag news. Stay with us.